petition and empirical knowledge, and not imagination fueled by faith, ensure survival within the prison walls. This social Darwinist theme occurs throughout the series as an antithesis for having a little faith. Sino's <coughs> utterance of the symbolic cue survival of the fittest is also important because it espouses, quote, a physicalist view of reality. Second, the theme erases the distinction, most notably the capacity for transcendence between humans and animals. Survival of the fittest not only invites a comparison between prisoners and animals, but also between superior and inferior types of human beings and efforts to justify prejudices such as racism, sexism, and homophobia. For this reason, it's important and troubling to know that the Darwinian ethic is articulated by an African-American man whom a racist might see as more naturally adapted for the prison environment than Michael and other white inmates. While this is the topic of another paper entirely, it is sufficient for my purpose here to note this cue also assumes an ideological argument for a world in which God does not exist. So while this theme does account for the struggles inherent in human existence and the apparent progress in human development, it also serves an important function in the series by temporarily privileging the epistemological vision of science over the unpredictability of faith and imagination. That is, only so that those who have a little faith can prevail. Once characters are on the outside, their views are tested. Each one faces a personal crossroads and a chance for redemption. This leads me to my final question. What implications do the religious visions have for a real world in a post 9-11 concept? And I have a lot of things to say here, but I'll just kind of break it down to the last one, which is this. Um, the ending, particularly in series two, where the prisoners wind up in prison again, highlights the suffering of others as an appeal to the audience to identify with people in pain, especially those who have been and are victims of terrorism, torture, and conspiracy. In this way, Prison Break asks the audience to wrestle with the issue of religiously inspired violence. And as a rejoinder, I must admit that this particular liberation narrative in Prison Break is not without its problems. In a sense, the show's audience is held captive to the old narratives of subjugation and white privilege insofar as they are asked to identify most closely with the suffering of white male characters like Michael and Lincoln, even though Michael isn't really white, but that's a subtext we can talk about later. Uh, prison Break also insulates viewers from the actual social conditions of real-life prison populations, which are predominantly black and brown, largely female, and increasingly Muslim. This means that when looking critically at Prison Break, we must remember that our differences serve not as fixed data of human experience, but as fantasy types with very real consequences. In the case of Prison Break, the need for empirical knowledge is ultimately replaced with the need for the communication of a confident faith. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Leonard Norman Primiano from Cabrini College. His paper is entitled, The Appalling Strangeness of the Mercy of God, the Vernacular Catholic, and the West Wing.
most academic conference papers I have experienced, especially at the annual meeting of the American Academy of Religion, are delivered in a mechanical, slow, robotic tone. Many of you should feel right at home. <laughs> My paper this morning and my lengthier book chapter in small screen and big screen, my first plug for the book, <laughs> emphasizes, my paper this morning emphasizes the first four years of the television, television series, The West Wing, broadcast originally from 1999 to 2006, and written by Aaron Sorkin. In particular, one, I'm emphasizing one of the drama's central characters, the President of the United States, Josiah Edward Jed Bartlett. I argue that the West Wing, ostensibly a politically centered drama about the personal lives of the staffers of a presidential administration, was a provocative yet enormously appealing sight not only for the expression of American Catholicism, but also for the negotiation of American Catholicism. Not the Catholicism of the institutional church and its hierarchies, structures, and various dogmatic, textural, liturgical concerns, but the practice of the practice religion of the tradition's people, including the church's hierarchical functionaries, a rich, vibrant, Vernacular Catholicism. Vernacular Catholicism is the tradition of Catholicism as it is spoken about, thought about, acted upon, interpreted, negotiated, created, and recreated in the lives of all Catholics, whether leaders or immigrants, whether conversant with the tradition or awed by it, or we and whether educated about it through a department of theology at a Catholic college or university through Mother Angelica on cable television, God help us, <laughs> through one's parents, or through structured classes at the local parish. I contend, moreover, that it was this Catholic expression of vernacular religion in the West Wing that made the series particularly resonate with and appealing to viewers both prior to and after the attacks of 9-11. In so doing, I examine how Sorkin ingeniously integrated religion into his drama, never making it the center of concern per se, but always focusing it as an important context within contemporary American life. The political drama The West Wing was first seen on American television on the 22nd of September 1999, broadcast over the National Broadcasting Company. Uh, the program, in its initial years, highlighted the efforts of the actor Rob Lowe, along with an ensemble cast. Show creator and writer and executive producer Aaron Sorkin concluded its pilot episode with what would be described as an extended cameo by the character, by the character around whom all the drama's action revolves, namely the President of the United States, played by actor Martin Sheen. Now, that's old story in and of itself about Margie, which I wanted to go into. Indeed, The West Wing is an episodic series whose characters work in the administrative section of the residence of the chief executive in Washington. The West Wing was and remains particularly notable for the way it presented issues of religious belief and practice without ostensibly being a drama about religion and especially not a drama explicitly centered on Christianity, such as the weekly series Nothing Sacred, or the Book of Daniel, which was on NBC in 2006. Programs that had short runs due to their attempts to portray the reality of the people in religious institutions, specifically clergy. Because of its popularity among viewers, the central character of the West Wing gradually evolved to be President Jed Bartlett, a convinced Catholic with a stern Protestant father and mother who never appears on the screen, but whose Catholicism notably affected her Notre Dame graduate, Nobel Prize in economics winning, Bible quoting presidential son. Religion is not simply an idealization of beliefs and practices, but how individuals